If you've ever been caught in a lie, you know just how awkward the experience can be. While yes, honesty is always the best policy, sometimes the urge to lie ends up getting the best of us. However, when celebrities tell huge lies and are caught in the act, it often leads to scandal and lots of backpedaling, retractions, and extreme denials. If anything, it's just more proof that the truth is always the best way to go, because lies have the tendency to catch up with you. Yet for some reason, these stars still thought they could get away with being deceptive. So let's take a look at the top 10 celebrities who were caught lying on live TV. Number 10, Ellen DeGeneres. We can never forget the moment that Dakota Johnson became one of the only celebrities to call Ellen out for lying on her own show. On her program, Ellen has done many shady things and gotten away with it just because she was the one hosting and everyone else was a guest. For instance, the time when she forced Mariah Carey to admit that she was pregnant by offering her a glass of champagne. And when the singer refused, her baby news was announced without her consent. But in 2019, Ellen brought on Dakota Johnson and started whining about how she never invited her to her birthday party that she threw. She probably expected Dakota to get flustered and profusely apologize, but instead she said, actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. Ask everybody, ask Jonathan, your producer. Dakota then revealed that she had invited her to her 30th birthday party and even called for witnesses, while Ellen denied the accusation. Finally, off camera, someone affiliated with the show confirmed that yes, Dakota was right and that Ellen had been out of town and could couldn't be there. This obviously made her extremely uncomfortable, and she tried to manage the situation as best as she could. But Ellen was clearly caught in a lie, and the resulting awkwardness was darkly satisfying to watch. Number 9 Rebel Wilson The Australian actress was outed for lying about her real name and age. She had previously said that she was 29 years old and that her real name was Rebel. But thanks to an Australian tabloid, the world found out that she was actually a 35 year old named Melanie Elizabeth Bounds. One year before the revelation, Wilson told the tabloid that her real name was Rebel and that Melanie and Elizabeth were middle names that she used in school, all to avoid getting teased. But the news outlet then uncovered the official Australian documents that not only showed that to be untrue, but also proved that she was born on March 2nd, 1980, a full six years earlier than she claimed. In fact, she once told Conan that she grew up in the more gangster side of Sydney. Amidst the resulting backlash, Rebel hit back at the press on Twitter and wrote, OMG, I'm actually a 100 year old mermaid formerly known as CC Chalice. Thanks, shady Australian press, for your tall poppy syndrome. According to the City Morning Herald, Rebel ended up suing Bauer Media for defamation in 2017, and her mother appeared in court, claiming that although her daughter wasn't a spoiled little rich kid who went to private school, she admitted the family lived in an average Sydney suburb. Who would have thought that lying about your background and basically your whole identity would come back to bite you when you make it to Hollywood? Number 8, Lindsay Lohan. In 2016, the actress was doing an interview with a reporter in Greece when her bizarre new European accent was noticed. During the interview, Lindsay was explaining why she had opened up a nightclub in Athens called Lohan. She said, In the past, I've been associated with clubbing and nightclubs. I said, why not do my own club, she told reporters. Then she said, we have to help other people. If we can do it with a nightclub or with a spa or with refugee camps and containers, we can create peaceful locations where we can all be happy. Although she was born in Long Island, she appeared to have ditched her New York drawl for some completely inexplicable accent which seemed to have combined the traces of most dialects you've ever heard. Eventually, Lindsay did explain her new intonation, saying it stems from her penchant for learning languages. And when she was asked about why she didn't sound like her former self at all, she said je ne sais pas and explained that her new accent was a mixture of most of the languages that she can understand or is trying to learn. She told Daily Mail, I've been learning different languages since I was a child. I'm fluent in English and French, can understand Russian, and am learning Turkish, Italian, and Arabic. Arabic. To be fair, at the time, Lindsay was mainly based in England and Greece and was said to be in a relationship with a Russian billionaire. But to this day, many fans still think her accent was completely fake because it always seemed to be changing. Number 7, Jussie Smollett. The Empire star claimed that he was the victim of a homophobic and racist attack and said that he was brutally attacked by two white men wearing ski masks in Chicago around 2 a.m. on January the 29th in 2019. Investigators searched for the perpetrators of what was initially described 
described as a possible hate crime. Jussie did a round of media appearances and went on Good Morning America in February of 2019 for his first ever interview about the alleged attack. He became emotional at one point saying that he was forever changed and felt pissed off by both the incident itself and the skepticism swirling on social media. He explained that he did not hand over his cell phone to police because he has private pictures and videos and numbers on there and said that the attack felt like minutes but it was probably 30 seconds. But interestingly enough that same month more details would surface that poked holes in his story and a little more than two weeks after the alleged incident Jesse was arrested and charged with filing a false police report. It was eventually revealed that he paid two brothers $3,500 to stage the attack all in an effort to raise his show business profile. The actor was found guilty by a jury of five of the six felony disorderly conduct counts that he faced, one for each time that he was accused of lying to the police. As a result, he was sentenced to 30 months probation and 150 days in jail and ordered to pay $120,000 in restitution, not to mention an additional $25,000 in fines. Number six, Amber Heard. During the highly publicized defamation trial brought against her by her ex-husband Johnny Depp, there were several key moments where it became obvious that the actress was caught in a lie of epic proportions. Undoubtedly, one of the craziest moments in the trial was when Terence Doherty, the general counsel and chief operating officer of the ACLU, testified about what really happened to the money that Amber pledged. He revealed in a recorded deposition that the actress only donated $1.3 million of the $3.5 million that she pledged to the organization from her divorce settlement. So if we rewind a little bit, when Johnny and Amber reached a divorce settlement back in 2016, the actress announced that she would donate the entirety of her $7 million divorce settlement to charity, half to the American Civil Liberties Union and half to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. So this meant that the ACLU should have received $3.5 million. But Mr. Doherty said that he received four donations from her, which only totaled $1.3 million. The catch is that only one of those payments was from Amber directly. To make matters worse, when she took the stand and was questioned about this, she told the court that she uses the word pledge and donate synonymously, which revealed that she didn't intend to make good on her promise and most likely just did it for publicity. Number five, Jack and Meg White. When the White Stripes rose to fame in 2002, their garage rock band found huge success and fans quickly became obsessed with singer and guitarist Jack White and his apparent sister and drummer Meg White. People loved the fact that they were a sibling duo because it made them more interesting and it gave them a bit of an edge over similar bands. But Jack and Meg were hiding a massive secret. They weren't actually brother and sister, they were husband and wife. The pair got married in 1996 and Jack White was originally born Jack Gillis, but he took Meg's surname and the band was born. In a 2005 interview with Rolling Stone, Jack explained their reason for lying. He said, I want you to imagine if we had presented ourselves in another fashion that people might have thought was the truth. How would we have been perceived right off the bat? When you see a band that is two pieces, husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, you think, oh, I see. When they're brother and sister, you go, oh, that's interesting. He went on to say that it made fans care more about their music rather than their relationship because siblings are more or less mated for life, which is certainly a funny way to look at it. But obviously the White Stripes found a lot of success in the rock and roll scene. So maybe it was a good idea after all. Number four, R. Kelly. During his explosive interview with Gail King in 2019, he tearfully and angrily denied accusations of violence and even appeared to have to be physically restrained during his emotional tell-all. In his first interview since he was charged with attacking four women, three of them being the R&B singer went on CBS this morning at the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago and he completely lost hold of his composure. At the craziest point in the interview, R. Kelly stood above Gail and started screaming. He jumped out of his chair and pounded his chest, yelling into the camera. Gail sat in front of him just inches away, managing to maintain her composure. The interview covered several topics, including his finances and his crumbling reputation in the music industry, but it was speaking about the disturbing allegations against Against him in the documentary Surviving R. Kelly that really seemed to set him off. Ever since that infamous appearance, several body language experts have analyzed the rapper's demeanor and facial expressions, coming to the conclusion that he was lying through his teeth. Apparently, it was his anxiously clenched fists, fake sad noises, and contradictory head movements that betrayed his guilt. Eventually, Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison for using his superstardom to subject his young female fans to systematic violence. The 55-year-old was convicted of racketeering 
smuggling and trafficking last year at a trial that gave a voice to all his young accusers who were ignored for so long. Number 3 Robert Pattinson The actor shocked fans and probably a few journalists when he admitted that he will often just make something up in an interview in order to say anything at all. And one of his most chaotic lying era anecdotes came out on the Today Show while he was promoting Water for Elephants. He told Matt Lauer a seemingly traumatic story from when he was younger and said, The first time I went to the circus, somebody died. One of the clowns died. His little car exploded. The joke car exploded on him. Seriously, yeah. My parents had to. Everyone ran out. It was terrifying. It was the only time I've ever been to the circus. But only seven days later, another journalist followed up that clown story only to hear him say, I said those things, but I actually made the whole thing up. It's coming back to haunt me. I said it on some show. It was really early in the morning the day after the New York premiere. Someone asked me what my experience with the circus was and I was like, I have nothing interesting to say. I don't know why I said that. Apparently, Patterson simply runs out of things to say, so he has to improvise. But to be fair, imagine if you had to do 200 interviews to promote a movie where you played a glittering vampire. You'd probably get a little bit sick of telling the same stories over and over too. Number 2 Tilda Swinton When the remake to the 1977 horror film Suspiria was first announced, the cast included several A-list actors like Dakota Johnson and Tilda Swinton. But no one could place one of the actors supposedly named Lutz Ebersdorf, who played Dr. Joseph Klemperer in the movie. He was supposedly a real German psychoanalyst, making his acting debut. But when images of Mr. Ebersdorf appeared online, viewers noticed a striking similarity between him and Tilda Swinton. Let's just say if she happened to be wearing old man makeup. But for months, the actress and everyone involved in the movie production claimed that that was not the case and issued countless statements and corrections that speculated about Ebersdorf. Tilda even read a letter from him at the movie's Venice Film Festival premiere that said, I am a private individual who prefers to remain private. I strongly suspect Suspiria will be the only film I ever appear in. Finally, a few weeks later, she gave an interview with the New York Times clearing up the air, admitting that it was her who played Ebersdorf. Funnily enough, she further claimed that if she had been asked a question, she would have told the truth and said, the intention was never to fool anybody because the illusion was part of, quote, our design that there would be something unresolved about the identity of the performance of the character. All things considered though, Tilda and the rest of the Suspiria cast deserve full credit for playing along for so long. And coming in at number one, Steve Renazzisi. In interviews, the comedian would often say that he survived the events of 9-11 and said that it was his near-death experience that influenced his decision to get into the world of entertainment. He essentially created his own backstory, saying that he worked for Merrill Lynch at the World Trade Center and was fortunate to escape the tragedy. Soon after that, he apparently moved to LA, got into stand-up and became a cast member of the sitcom The League. He obviously claimed to have escaped, but throughout the years, the details about his 9-11 survival story seemed to change. He went from claiming that he was jostled all over the place while working in the South Tower when the first plane hit the North Tower, to backpedaling and claiming that he was outside the whole time because he was working downtown. At this point, he was gradually downplaying his story, but when an investigative report by the New York Times uncovered the truth, he finally owned up to his lies, saying, I don't know why I said this. This was inexcusable. I am truly, truly sorry. The same day that the story broke, Steve tweeted his apology for letting the lies spiral out of control. He wrote, For many years, more than anything, I have wished that with silence, I could somehow erase a story told by an immature young man. It only made me more ashamed. A few weeks later, he went on Howard Stern and admitted to his mistake again, saying that he just wanted to be accepted by other famous comedians when he first moved to LA. There's no other way to put it, his revelation was shocking. Well, that's everyone that we have on the list for today. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.